Okay, so welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at our definite integral. And, and our definite integral, uh, this is where we're going to spend a lot of time this semester. And for our definite integral, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our antiderivatives, just like we did when we um, applied our indefinite integrals. But then also what we're going to do is we're going to have our some limits of integration, some a values and some b values on the integral. And um, it's going to allow us to calculate um, the area that is between the curve, between whatever the graph is of the, anti of the uh, integrand, and the x-axis. And if that area falls below the x-axis, it is considered negative. Um, so there's a couple of parts to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Oftentimes, you'll see this referred to as uh, FTC. And if the integrand is continuous on a closed interval from A to B, then if you have G defined as the integral from A to X of F of T dt for every X and AB, then G is the antiderivative. And, and we'll, do some, uh, we'll do some stuff with this in, in just a few minutes. The second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, maybe, is the one that we'll be using over and over again. Okay? So if F is my antiderivative, so the capital F is the antiderivative for every uh, value of uh, A to B, A and B are called my limits of integration. The lower limit of integration is down below, and the upper limit is up above. We're going to take a look at some of the properties of those limits of integration um, in our next section. What happens here is we kind of, I, I teach this in a little bit different order than a lot of books. Um, I fast forward, I go through, I go through um, how to calculate the fundamental theorem of calculus, and then I go back and I'll do some properties with you, and then we quiz. And then I'll go back and explain to you the connection between area and uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus and the integral. So you have, still have your integrand, your variable of integration, d of x. You have these lower limits at a and upper limit at b. What happens is you take the antiderivative, you plug in the upper limit, and then you subtract the lower limit, and it'll find the area underneath the curve. So let's take a look at a quick example of that before I get into some substitution ones. Say we have something like this, the integral from negative 2 up to 3 of 6x squared minus 5 dx. No substitution is needed. I can integrate each of these individually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the antiderivative. Um, when I take the antiderivative, I'm going to use some integral notation, which is the antiderivative of this is going to be 2x cubed minus 5x. And then I rewrite it with the lower limit at negative 2 and the upper limit at 3. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as like integral notation. Our book does it a little bit differently. They have little brackets here. Um, you know, I did it with a line because that's the way I learned it when I was learning calculus. Uh, so whatever, however you want to write that is fine with me. Um, and then what I'm going to do to to evaluate this fundamental theorem of calculus is I plug in the top limit or the upper limit, which is three, the b value, and then I take the difference away. Uh, I plug in um, the a value, and uh, be careful. And so the basic arithmetic causes people a lot of trouble. So it's going to be two times three cubed minus five times three. That's all the, that's, you know, f at the b value, minus 2 times negative 2 cubed, minus 5 times negative 2. And when I put that in my magic uh, calculator brain, um, I got 45. The basic arithmetic does cause people a lot of difficulty. If you can, if you have uh, fractions, and you will have fractional values, and you'll have some trig functions, you'll have some unit circle functions, and all that stuff that you'll have to evaluate. And when you do so, um, make sure you pull any constant values out front. That will really help you quite a bit. Um, Another thing that we can do is our is our, our change of variable, and we do this with u just like we did with our, our antiderivatives um, uh, yesterday or the, uh, the previous video. Um, we now have our variable of integration, our, our changes from the dx value to du value, and when you do that, you've got to take and put a and b into whatever you let u be to change your limits of integration. Uh, and then you never put the u value back in. You just leave it in terms of, of what you have it. This is a lot easier to do this way. Um, let's say we have something like this. Let's say we have an integral from 2 to 10 of 3 over the square root of 5x minus 1 dx. That 3 is a constant. I can pull it out front. So I can really rewrite this as 3 times the integral from 2 to 10 of 1 over the square root of 5x minus 1 dx. 
Um, now, the u value is going to be this 5x minus 1. I want to rewrite it in terms of u to the negative 1 half in a minute. And when I do that, when I let u be 5x minus 1, du is 5dx. I'm going to multiply the whole integral by uh, 1 fifth, because I have to solve for dx is 1 fifth of du. But then also, I have to change my limits of integration. So I have to change this. I have to put 2. I take 2, and I put it in right here. And when I put the 2 in, that lower limit of integration now becomes 9. So when I do this, let's see here. dx is 1 fifth of, d of du. Let's rewrite the integral. So this uh, 3, the 3 part of it right here, goes over that. So it's 3 fifths times the integral. That lower limit, I plug in 2 into 5x minus 1, and I get 9. Then I plug in 10 into 5x minus 9, or 1, I get 49. My integrand is now going to be u to the negative 1 half power, du. From here, we're ready to go. No more substitution needed. I'm going to add 1 to, the, I'm going to add one to this uh, exponent. It's going to be u to the 1 half divided by 1 half, which is multiplied by 2. So I, I say I can put, put constants out front. So it's 3 fifths times 2 over 1 times u to the 1 half, and that's at 9 and 49. This part right here is 6 fifths, and I would write it that way. So it's 6 fifths, parentheses, u to the 1 half at 9 and 49. Evaluate this in parentheses and then multiply by 6 fifths. Don't try to do 6 fifths of each one individually. It would be a pain in the butt. So it's going to be 6 fifths. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 9 is 3. So ultimately, my answer is 24 over 5. You will have to do this by hand. So you will have to deal with these fractional values. Boy, pull these, pull these, these fractions out front. That will help you and save you a lot, a lot of pain. Okay. Um, a couple of properties that we have that will make your life a little bit easier, sometimes if you can recognize these. Um, the, the integral is the area under the curve bound by the curve and the x-axis. And if you have something that is an even function, in other words, it's symmetrical over the y-axis, and you go from a negative a value to a positive a value, and it's the integram that's the even function, then you can rewrite that as 2 times the integral from 0 up to a. This is what nice property you can use. And if it's an odd function, notice that this area up here will cancel out this area down here. Because remember, I said the area bound by the curve up here on the positive side is going to be positive. This one below the x-axis is going to be considered negative. So these areas are going to cancel each other out. So that's going to be just 0. If you can recognize these, um, it can save you some time. And we're going to get into some more properties in our, our next video as well. Um, one of the things that you're, you will see is that if you take the derivative of an integral where you have a constant value up to x of f of t dt. It's simply the integrand at x. That's all it is. Let's take a look at this. Let's say I had the, the derivative of the integral from, I don't know, let's say 1 up to x of, uh, I don't know, uh, let's do uh, sine of x. Nope, sorry, sine of t. My bad. the sine of t dt. And we're integrating first. So when I integrate this, it's going to be the derivative of, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, the antiderivative of, of sine is going to be negative cosine. So it's going to be negative cosine of, uh, of my t value at 1 and then at x. And I'm going to take the derivative of that. So um, let's uh, apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it's the derivative d dx of negative cosine of x minus negative cosine of 1. That negative cosine of 1 is just a constant. It's just a number. It's not a nice number. But then if I take the derivative of negative cosine, that ends up back at the sine at x. Common multiple choice question that you'll see on the AP exam. One thing you got to be careful of is that this value right here is something other than x, like if it was x squared, you have to apply chain rule, and so you have like a 2x in front of the sine of x. Uh, that does happen, and I'll, I'll look at some of those with the, you as multiple choice questions as we get closer to the AP exam. Um, let's take a look at one more of the definite integrals where we have our substitution involved, because I think that gets people the most confused. So let's say we're integrating 
from 0 to pi over 4. We'll do a trig function. Trig's always harder because you got to remember unit circle. In this particular case, the 1 plus the sine of 2x raised to the third power, that's my that's my inside function. So u is 1 plus the sine of 2x. The derivative du is going to be 2 times the cosine of 2x dx. So then this part right here, the cosine of 2x dx, that's 1 half of du. So when I rewrite my integral in terms of u and du, I've got a 1 half out front. I plug in 0 right here into u. The sine of 0 is 0, so that's just going from 1. Pi over 4, if I go 1 um, plus the sine of 2 times pi over 4 is the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So it's just going up to 2, and that's going to be u cubed du. Now I'm done with u. I changed my limits of integration. I don't have to put u back in there. It's done. No, it's all, That's it. It's over. Okay. So take my antiderivative, so it's going to be 1 half times 1 fourth times u to the fourth power at 1 and at 2. Again, pull this constants out front, so 1 eighth times 2 to the fourth power minus 1 to the fourth power. This part in here, that's 16, that's 1, so it's 15 over 8. So integrating by hand, um, doing this substitution, very important. We're going to connect it back with area. We're going to do that in a couple of lessons, um, but I teach you the fundamental theorem of calculus. I teach how to evaluate a definite integral, and then we'll go back and explain to you like things like the Riemann sums, uh, the left end point approximation, right end point approximation, trapezoid approximation, midpoints approximation. So I'll connect it to area a little bit later on in this class. Uh, best of luck, and our next lesson will be on properties of the definite integral.